Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second part of our Anyone Can Grow series. Uh, I'd like to thank HasGeek for making all of this possible. I don't think we would have done this without their help. Uh, not only are we doing this on Zoom, and I'm sure a lot of you people are joining from there, we are also live streaming this to YouTube and also on Facebook, or at least we're trying Facebook today. Um, this particular session is a continuation of the previous session we did. I don't know how many of you actually were in that session too, uh, but I think that you will find that this session continues pretty much from where we left off. So this session talks about preparing pots for growing, soil improvement, and direct sowing of seeds, right? All things that are que answering several questions that I'm sure you have in your mind about how to grow food. So just to begin with, a brief introduction for those who are new to this session. Um, Green Essentials, we are based in Goa. Um, Yogita started Green Essentials about 11 years ago and uh, kind of roped me in to help her too. We started growing at home in 2006, several years before that. And we run Green Essentials is actually a kitchen garden store that's in Goa. Uh, place called Sukur, a village called Sukur, uh, just outside the, uh, the town. Uh, we've been doing workshops on growing organic food for people for the last 10 years. Uh, and in that time, we have done different scales of growing ourselves. Uh, we've grown fruits, herbs and vegetables in kitchen gardens for ourselves, of course, but also in small organic farms up to a one and a half hectares. So we have had several kind of years of experience in growing food organically, um, you know, at different scales. And I guess that's what uh, we really want to talk about. And those experiences are the ones that we want to share with you today. Um, what we look at as our primary role is to basically to try and coach new kitchen gardeners on how to grow food. A lot of people are intimidated by it or don't have the knowledge they feel they need before they can get started. And that's the gap we are trying to bridge right now, right? So I hope you find the session enjoyable and informative and uh, we'll start with it now. So this is the kind of kitchen garden that we grow in. This is a kitchen garden at our store, which we used to demonstrate to people what can be done to grow food. As you'll see a great variety of vegetables already growing over here. And uh, we tend to run this right through the year things change according to the seasons, but uh, the garden remains productive through the whole year. For those who did not join the first session, or actually for those even who may have, I just like to recap what we covered. In that particular session, we talked about how it is that we could get a kitchen garden started, even though most of us are locked down and don't have access to basic input seeds and things like that, right? So the first thing that we said was that you really need to get your nursery started immediately. Uh, I'm hoping many people did manage to do that last week. And if not, certainly should do it this week. Uh, we talked about how you could find usable seeds in your kitchen. Uh, things like tomato, methi, pumpkin, chili, mustard, mint, and more. And we talked about how to use any available containers you have to set up your nurseries, right? It could be uh, takeaway containers, it could be small pots, anything that you have that can really hold a little bit, bit of soil and can be used to start your seeds. Uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, you will be on the way to good seedlings like the kind that you can see on the screen very soon. Now, when we spoke last time, we kind of made this summary of the different stages of growing that we will go through. And we started at the first one, which was seeds and nurseries. Uh, in this one, we are going to talk a lot about soil preparation. And in sub subsequent sessions, we plan to do a total of five sessions, uh, you know, every week, pretty much on a Thursday. So next time we'll talk about transplanting or sowing. Then we'll cover growing and caring, harvesting, and then planning your next growing cycle for the uh, change in seasons, right? So we'll try and go through each of these so that you have a good sense of how you need to proceed from uh, uh, stage to stage. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about specifically in this session, uh, which is session number two of Anyone Can Grow. Um, how do you select appropriate growing containers for growing? Uh, by this, I mean not containers for 
nurseries, which we already spoke about. But for when your saplings will be ready for transplant and you will have to move them to a growing space itself. So these growing containers, how do you select the right ones? Then once you've selected the containers, how do you prepare them for sowing? How do you make good organic soil, put it in the containers? Which vegetables can you, will you be sowing seeds directly instead of raising little seedlings? And why, why are these sown directly and not put into the nurseries? And lastly, troubleshooting questions that you may have in case you've started your seedlings and are facing problems. So that will be the last section and we will get to it at the end, right? So just wanted to point out that if you have questions, please you know, send them in as we go through the session. Uh, you will notice that there is a Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom interface. When you put your mouse down to the bottom of your Zoom interface and the panel pops up, you'll be able to see a Q&A section. So please put your questions in there and our team will be able to take note of them and bring them up for answering at the end when we reach the EMA section of the uh, session, right? Um, so just to reiterate, uh, we believe very deeply that almost any person can learn how to grow food. Uh, it is something which may take years to become a master of, but to get a grips of the basics can take just a few weeks, right? Or a few months at most. Uh, if you are really interested in doing this, if you are a person who is persistent, uh, you know, in your work in the garden, uh, we believe that you can get pretty good at it. Uh, we believe also that small growing spaces can be very surprisingly productive. We look at a small balcony and think that, you know, maybe you can't grow much here, but we believe that substantial amount of produce from the perspective of a kitchen can come out from over there. And you can always grow some things, if not all things for yourself. Uh, we feel that your health comes first and that is one of the major reasons why you should even bother to take the effort. Uh, you will have much more nutritious food as a result of growing your food without chemicals and other fertilizers. And we believe that the produce that you will harvest will have an unbeatable mix of freshness, nutrition and flavor, which is what really makes it all worth it, right? So these are things that uh, are, are aimed at kind of explaining to you the benefits of growing at home, something that we've experienced and a lot of people uh, you know, across India now experience as they've got more interested in doing this. Okay, so growing in containers, as I said, can be productive. You can see here, this is a, you know, terrace garden in Bombay. And you can see a wide variety of things growing in it. There's tomatoes, there are cabbages, there's mint, uh, you know, some mustard greens and so on that you can see within the frame and many more things also growing in other parts of the same terrace. I'll pass on now to Yogita. Uh, and she will talk to you about different types of containers and how they can be prepared. Over to you, Yogita. Okay, hi. So, um, there's, I mean, when I started growing, it was confusing that what kind of containers should we typically use. And uh, traditionally, growing up, we've always seen the typical terracotta or the mitika containers that we find. And um, those are the ones that I would graduate to. Here in Goa, we found that they are not really of a very strong quality in the sense that after maybe a season or so being out in the rain, they usually tend to sort of disintegrate or you know it breaks apart. So we were not really happy with those. And over the years, we've tried a number of containers. And you can see up on the screen there that we've put out a bunch of them. And really any one uh, of these works. It depends what is easily accessible to you. It depends what is affordable. And uh, it depends on your situation as well. For example, um, I would prefer plastic containers if I stayed up on the fifth or sixth floor because imagine carrying heavy cement pots up and down. That can be a bit of a problem. Um, I mean, you develop muscle and all other benefits, but it will be a tiresome thing. So plastic containers are good. They come in a variety of sizes um, from the smallest ones that you can see here to pretty large, two feet big and uh, deep ones. Um, so that is something that is also very easily available if you go out to buy them. Cement containers are good if you don't plan to move them around. Um, the, 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 one of the problems sometimes one has is that they heat up a little too much. But we do find that they seem to work just as well. 
uh, as long as you don't plan to move them around because with the soil and the plants then it becomes quite a heavy thing to um, you know work with grow bags are also a very common um, or rather popular thing now um, very light easy to move around uh, they are flexible you can roll them down if you need less soil you can roll it up to its full size if you need more soil um, they are very affordable so that also works if you want to have a really large place with lots of pots in it then you may want to go with grow bags they don't last very long but um, they are very easy to use easy to move around then you could use um, ceramic containers uh, ceramic containers look gorgeous they have one sitting right here um it's a small one though but they can be pretty expensive so if you want to have several pots it becomes a little expensive to have many of these you can use maybe the odd nice piece that you find you can add it to your collection of containers then of course there's the terracotta pot um that is the most common one you can also use metal containers you know you have those galvanized buckets that are available at most hardware stores or sometimes you may have um an old container like uh, you know the the old biscuit tins or the oil tins that you had if you are able to get the top off that's a solid amount of soil and that can you know grow a lot of uh, you, you can grow quite a bit of stuff in it the only problem with this is that in our climate these can tend to rust and disintegrate soon so um you will need to replace these um and other than this you can sort of use your imagination and you can really use all kinds of recycle containers you have a funny image there of someone using a commode but um, i have something here you know these days you go buy a 5 kilo bag you get a really sturdy plastic bag this sort of is a substitute for um, a grow bag you can have you can collect several of these you can go to your kirana shop and ask him to keep them for you they even have handles so they're easy to move around um my mother is quite a um, creative person she takes these containers in which she has colors and she paints them around so you can you know make them pretty and um, you can sort of use these as well um moving on uh, here's you know some of the containers that i have sort of gone around the house and put together some are take away some are old tin boxes and so on now the next question which is an important question is that what should what is the appropriate size of container for different plants there are different kinds of plants we grow not all of them need a huge depth of soil um typically leafy vegetables and herbs are uh, great if you use an 8 inch depth 8 to 10 inch depth most leafy vegetables and herbs will grow fine and that they don't have very deep roots fruiting vegetables like brinjal tomatoes um bindi lady finger or um what have you been or if you're growing cucumber all these would be fine in pots say about 12 to 14 inch so usually a pot is more or less as deep as it is wide so you have a, a, like a 12 to 14 inch pot would be about that big and you can grow um, one plant per pot so these really comfortably you can also grow fruiting trees and we have a lot of them growing in our garden uh, we've grown chiku lemon uh, custard apple um Uh, figs uh, guava mango i mean it's it's quite an endless list of the number of fruiting trees that you can grow for these you need really large containers you can use barrels large barrels you can chop the top off you can use two foot the, the minimum depth you require is about 18 inches as the plant starts growing and you may need to move it up along as you go um so here is a a, a picture of my balcony and uh, we have different sizes and there's a you know quite a collection of pots here you can have quite a range of things that grow 